you're in a services business, you're in a consultant business, you have lots of different clients. You need to communicate with each other to work effectively with your virtual team. That's where Teams comes in. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Teams in a services company. So stay tuned for that. Microsoft Teams is a collaboration platform that companies like ours use to keep everybody in sync and communicating with one another. It's a single place to go to find files, to ask questions, to interact with other team members that might be on the other side of the office or the other side of the world. In this video, I'm gonna take you how we use Microsoft Teams in a digital marketing services company and show you how we organize projects and communicate with each other in Teams. Teams uses the concept of a team. And a team is an organizational unit that a person or a user can have membership in. I use Teams for accounting. We use Teams for training. We have Teams for every single client we have. Each of these Teams is the go-to place for that different functional or services or operational area. The first team that we have in place is an administration team. And in that administrative team, we have different channels and those channels serve different purposes. This is like the starting point when you're setting up teams for your organization. And in that administrative area, there are a couple things that are, are useful. The first is having a channel for training. We record training videos and we organize them into different areas. We have different tabs to show the different functional areas for training. And that very first tab, it's called Start Here. And the Start Here tab has the first videos that we would like everybody to see when they join our organization. The next team that we have is our organizational team. And this is the place where everybody has access. Whether they're a contractor or a full-time employee, everybody has access to this one place. And we have a few interesting things located in there. The first is a channel for announcements. Any announcement we make that needs to go to everybody is in this announcements channel. You just say at and the channel name and you make your announcement. In this case, I said at announcements, which then calls everybody out that's in that team. And then I said what I want to say. We also have a fun channel in there and that's where people post places they've been. Sometimes they have a content first marketing picture with them. Other times they're just showing friends and family or just beautiful places they've seen. It's a nice way to share internally with your team members the things you're doing. Now you might be wondering why is the left side organized in a very strange way? When you have your own team's environment, you can choose how to organize the left side. It doesn't just show up in a specific order, you make the order. And so I have things in different places based on how I use it. The other thing is we have pinned channels so that at the very top of the left side, you can pin a channel that you use frequently. I do that oftentimes when I'm working on a handful of projects. I have that main channel for that project pinned. And then when I'm done with that or it's not in heavy rotation, I unpin it. It's still accessible, it's just not in the upper left-hand corner. We have finance, we have many different groups of people either in delivery or in administration. And we have a team for each of that. And the reason we have that is for people that have like positions, that is, they're all editors or they're all writers, they can go to the main channel in that team and they can ask each other questions. For example, if I'm an editor, I might go to the editor's team and go to the general channel and I might just ask a question. And so what I'll do is I'll type in at channel and by typing at channel, it'll convert it to general. And then I might put a question in there or something that I want to discuss. If I do at channel, every single person in that team will see that you have an inquiry. And the way they see this is on the left side of the screen where it shows activity, there will be a red circle with a number in it. And that number is how many messages that person, that user in Teams has been called out. So if somebody does an at general in a channel, you're going to know that occurred. If somebody calls you out by name, you're going to know that occurred. If you wanna see where you've been called out either individually or as part of a channel where you are a member, 
you just go to activity and it will show in order the callouts. Now, I encourage you to keep up with this. It's kind of like an email inbox, but it's not really an inbox. It is a way to see when you were called out and it's a good way to catch up on what's going on. Teams also uses direct messaging. They call it chat. And in chat, you can have a direct conversation with an individual or with a group of people. Now, I use chat sparingly. I use chat when the dialogue is not appropriate for a larger group. But if we are having a conversation about a client, I don't really want that in chat. And the reason I don't want that is because the other members of the team for that client don't get to see the conversation. I would rather go to the client's team in the general channel and then have the conversation with an individual, which does lead to the next type of team. That's a client team. We're a services company. We're doing work on behalf of clients and we need to organize that work into teams. So for example, the content first marketing team has members in it and we have channels for each type of project we're doing. We use the team for the client and we use the channel for the type of services. All of the teams have a general channel. However, those that have other services have additional channels added. You'll see when you look here, we have a blogging and social media channel. We have another channel for Facebook ads. And we use these channels to separate out the conversations based on the services we're doing. That being said, anyone who is a member of the team can see what's in the other channels. So it allows people that are maybe not a part of the Facebook ads effort to still go and see what's going on there because they are a part of the overall team. So if I do need to ask somebody a question and it's in a team for a specific client and I don't want everybody to answer, I'm not going to say at channel, I'm just going to say at and their name. So for example, I might call out John Arnott Sr. and do something really simple there. So I've called out John Sr. I said, let's discuss it at our next meeting. Well, what's he going to do? When you run a virtual company and everybody's working from different places, communication can get lost. The cues that we give each other in face-to-face -face settings are lost. How do you handle that with something like Teams? You use an emoji. So when John Sr. sees this message, he's likely going to use one of these emojis to acknowledge, hey, I saw that. Now, when we conduct meetings, we usually do those in Teams and we use the calendar to do that. It has a really good scheduling system and the calendar is a great way to set up a Teams meeting and invite the people you need. For example, I might create a new meeting and in that meeting I may want to make sure I have certain people attend. So what I'm going to do is I'll go to my required attendees. I'll pick John Arnott Sr. and I see he's free for this meeting today. Oh, or say he's not available. I can click on scheduling assistant and then I can actually see all of his available times. And this is very useful for putting together team meetings. And once that meeting is created, we can collaborate on teams. There can be a call in number. We can share a screen. It's all tightly integrated. So whenever you schedule a meeting with somebody, use teams to schedule a teams meeting, invite the individuals that need to be a part of it and make sure to use that scheduling assistant so that you know when they're available. I would encourage one thing, when you're adopting Teams, when you're using Teams in the business, make absolutely certain that that's where your communication is. It doesn't do much good to start sending emails back and forth on some topics and other communications in Teams. I hope this is helpful. I make videos like this every week, sometimes on business and marketing, other times on personal development. If you liked what you saw today, I appreciate a thumbs up. Maybe give me a little comment if there's something that you do a little differently. And if you have any other ideas, put those in the comments as well. I appreciate your time today and I look forward to seeing you on the next video.